Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice was set up to be this epic showdown that the fans have been waiting decades to see. Sadly, what we got instead was this. Save Martha! Why did you say that name? And it doesn't matter how dedicated a fan you are, there is nothing that can save that scene. But this film wasn't the first time that Batman and Superman have fought one another, far from it. In comics, TV shows and video games, Batman and Superman have gone head to head many, many times. And we are going to count down the 5 best Batman vs Superman fights. Number 5. Justice League War Now this was a movie franchise that introduced us to a new universe of heroes, and we also saw in this first one the origin of the Justice League. But as we all know, when superheroes meet for the first time, they have to immediately fight one another. And only after they've punched each other around a bit will they get to talking reasonably with one another. And the reason they have to fight is very simple. It's fun. Not only for us watching the fight, but for the heroes themselves. I mean, if you and your best friend had superpowers, wouldn't you want to test them out with one another? But this is actually one of the better pissing matches that Batman and Superman have engaged in as we see not only the raw power that Superman has, but also the imagination and resourcefulness of Batman. At first, Superman fights Green Lantern, and he uses his overwhelming power to knock Green Lantern's constructs apart with relative ease. And then he fights Batman, and counters every single gadget that Batman can throw at him. And Batman has a lot of gadgets. And after Superman shrugs off a taser, Batman knows that he is just too powerful to straight up fight and so Batman doesn't waste any time in switching to another tactic. So instead of attacking him head on, he decides to attack Superman's senses, trying to take out his vision, then overwhelm his ears, and then after that fails, he just tries to avoid his blows, all in an attempt to find his weakness. But in the end, Superman was just too powerful for him, and we never really feel at any point in this fight that Batman has a genuine chance of winning. Though with that being said, Batman is able to stop the fight with ease, using his superpower, his intellect and knowledge. And he reveals that he knows that Superman is Clark Kent, and with just these few words, he abruptly stops the Kryptonian dead. Hey, 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 what happened? We're done fighting? And then Superman uses his X-ray vision on him to find out that he's Bruce Wayne. And this is actually quite a good summary of the two characters. Superman uses his godlike powers to get what he wants, whereas Batman has to use his intellect to outmaneuver his much more powerful enemies. And as first meeting fights go, it's actually not that bad. I mean, all superheroes fight each other when they meet, as I said. And usually this is just a bit of fan service. It's not a real fight and everyone's left thinking, hmm, they easily could have done this or this to outmaneuver them. But this fight actually goes quite well. Yes, it is unnecessary, but it does show the two in quite good lights. And the only real complaint I have with this fight is the Batman actually says previously in the film that he has researched Superman's power levels which means that Batman already knew that none of his attacks would work, so why bother with them? But if you ignore that part, it is actually quite a good fight. Number 4. Batman the Brave and the Bold Now, this show was pretty crazy for the most part, but it was a lot of fun to watch. And though many members of the Justice League were regularly in the show, Superman was surprisingly absent. But when he does come to the show, he is promptly exposed to Red Kryptonite. Now, in the past in comics, Red Kryptonite does pretty much whatever the plot needs it to. It's turned him into clones, it's given him new superpowers, and even grow an eye in the back of his head. Red Kryptonite does pretty much anything you can imagine. Whatever the writers want it to do, it does. But that was in the past, and generally speaking, these days in comics and other media, Red Kryptonite just turns Superman into a selfish jerk. No autographs! And this exposure to the Red Rock was of course a plan of his arch nemesis, Lex Luthor, who has given gifts to Jimmy Olsen and Lois Lane, the two closest people to Superman. And these gifts have red kryptonite in them. And after Superman is exposed, he eventually turns full on evil, and even tries to take over the Earth. Kneel before King Superman! Which of course leads to Batman fighting him, on his own, with no backup. Because of course, who else would fight the Man of Steel? So Batman then dons his classic battle armor from the Return of the Dark Knight comic, and the two begin to fight. And since Superman is now evil, he doesn't actually hold back against Batman, and he slaps him around like a ragdoll. Though fortunately, Batman does have Crypto on his side. And though Batman is drastically outpowered, he isn't actually trying to beat Superman. He just needs to keep him busy until the Red Kryptonite gets out of Superman's system. 
The effects of red kryptonite only last 24 hours. We just need to contain Superman for a little longer. And of course, Batman lasts long enough for Superman to return to normal. Are you all right? Yes, I... I think so. I'm sorry. And then the two team up to take down Lex Luthor, using the old switcheroo, where Batman pretends to be Superman and Superman pretends to be Batman. That way Lex Luthor uses Kryptonite on Superman, which doesn't hurt him because he's actually Batman, and then uses Lethal Force on Batman, which doesn't hurt him because he's Superman. It's a little bit of a trope that they regularly do with Lex Luthor. They've used it many times in comics and films. And it is a bit silly, I know, but it's also kind of a classic thing they do. And the inner fanboy inside of me just can't help but love it. Number 3. The Batman Now, with the show The Batman, I must admit that the first season or two wasn't very good. But from the third season on, it actually really picked up, and I do recommend watching it. And in the final season, several team-ups with Justice League members occurred, which were some of the best episodes the show had. And the fight that we're talking about happened in a two-part Superman story, where the Man of Steel comes to Gotham and then promptly gets mind-controlled into killing Batman. Now, having a hero mind-controlled into fighting another hero has become a bit of a tired cliché. But to be fair to writers, it is quite hard to come up with legitimate reasons for heroes to fight each other in a way that actually makes sense. So we can forgive them for using the old he was mind-controlled excuse. And in this particular instance, Lex Luthor once again uses kryptonite, and he combines green kryptonite with Poison Ivy's mind-controlling gas, and the two create a formula that turns Superman into Lex Luthor's slave. I said bow, you alien swine! <sighs> Now, fortunately, Batman has previously gotten hold of some kryptonite, though this only buys him some time, as citizens of Gotham City think that Superman is, of course, a hero, and they don't know that he's being mind-controlled. So when they see him being hurt by kryptonite, they step in to help him overcome the kryptonite so that he can go fight evil. Meanwhile, Batman works out that Superman is being mind-controlled by Poison Ivy's plant spores. So he exposes Superman to a lethal dose of plant killer, or at least lethal to a human, but Superman can of course take it. And all of this plant killer burns out the plant spores in Superman, and he gets control of his mind back. And I have to say, this is actually quite a clever way of freeing Superman's mind. And that's probably what I like most about this fight. Batman is able to beat Superman by using brains against brawn. Which in truth is what all of the fights of Batman vs Superman really come down to. And this episode also leads Batman into designing a kryptonite gun to take down Superman in the future, along with weapons to take out the rest of the Justice League as well, which some of the members, quite understandably, take a little bit of offense at. Blame it on me, guys. I went temporarily renegade the last time we worked together. This might have saved a lot of time and trouble. And possibly the strangest part about this whole fight is that at the end of it, the two now trust each other implicitly and have even become friends. It's an odd way to begin a friendship, with one trying to murder the other while high on drugs, but hey, who are we to judge? Number 2. The Dark Knight Returns Part 2 Now this film, and the Part 1 film, are actually one of the best film comic adaptions that I've ever seen. In fact, it may even be the best comic book adaption there is, next to Batman Under the Red Hood of course. As this film took all the great lines and great moments from the comics, and it included them in the film, without watering any of the scenes down. And at the same time, they also made a few changes here and there, along with a few lines of their own dialogue being thrown in, all of which were changes for the better, and it all led to an absolutely amazing couple of films. And my only regret is that the guys who made this masterpiece weren't in charge of the live-action version. And one of the main reasons that this fight is so good is because Superman and Batman are great friends. You see, The Dark Knight Returns is set in the future, after Batman and Superman have decades of history together, and they know each other pretty much as well as anybody has ever known either of them. And because of that, when they do actually fight, Superman is holding back throughout the whole fight. Whereas, if they didn't know each other, Superman would just attack properly at full power and take him out with ease. Which I think was one of the bigger problems with the live-action fight, as there was no actual reason for Superman not to just zoom in at the speed of sound and bash Batman on the head, taking him down. But in The Dark Knight, Superman doesn't want to hurt Batman, because they're friends. And in fact, if it wasn't for this friendship, Batman wouldn't stand a chance in this fight, because Batman needs Superman to go easy on him in order to get an opening, and he then uses his super advanced tech, combined with his knowledge of Gotham City, to take advantage of this opening and to, of course, hurt Superman. Along with teamwork and a kryptonite weapon that cost a fortune and took years to make, 
And it's because of this that Batman is able to get the upper hand and essentially win the fight. But the point of this fight was never for Batman to beat Superman. No, what Batman was really intending to do was to use the fight as a way to fake his own death so that he could continue his work in the shadows as Batman uninterrupted by the government. Because in this story, the government are the ones who've ordered Superman to take out Batman. They've actually taken out pretty much every superhero except for Superman, because they've decided enough is enough and superheroes need to be controlled. Because in the future, Superman has essentially become America's attack dog. It's a great comic book story and a fantastic couple of films, and probably the most famous Batman vs Superman fight there is. And it's pretty hard to beat, but it was beaten by, number one, Injustice. Now, the games may be titled as Injustice, but really the first game, and a decent portion of the second game, were just Batman vs Superman. And the cutscenes from these video games are a damn sight better than that god awful live action one. And Injustice is hands down the best fight, because it's the only time that the two ever really fight for real. Usually when the two fight each other, it's either because they're acting tough, being mind controlled, or are forced to fight by circumstances beyond their control. And it usually involves Superman holding back, but not in the Injustice universe. The two of them are 100% not being mind controlled and not being coerced into fighting. And they are giving it their all, with Superman holding nothing back and attacking Batman head on. And in all seriousness, including all the comics, TV series, movies and other games and everything else in media, the Injustice video game gives us the greatest Batman vs Superman fight that we have ever seen. And this is both in the game's cutscenes and in the gameplay sections, which is of course one of the best bits, as we watch a great Batman vs Superman film, while then getting a chance to take control of these characters and have the two of them fight it out, with us in control. And as if that wasn't enough, there is a dedicated comic book series that counts out Superman's full five year rise to power as Batman leads the insurgency against him. And this series is amazing, and if you haven't read it, then you really should. It kind of reads like a DC version of Game of Thrones, with anyone and everyone dying at any given moment. It's separate from the main DC universe, so literally anything can happen, and that is what makes it so great. Now you may have noticed that I'm not actually citing one specific fight, and that's because in truth the whole of the Injustice universe is the fight. The cutscenes, the gameplay and even the comics are all the story of Batman vs Superman in a superhero war that to date has spanned over a decade, making it undoubtedly the greatest Batman vs Superman fight that we have ever seen and I really hope they manage to top it in some other way, but for now, that's the best we've had. But what do you think? Do you agree with this list? Or are there any other Batman vs Superman fights that you think should have been included instead? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mass Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.